Good afternoon, everybody. We're going to continue our discussion of the aldol reaction and aldol condensation right now. So on this screen, we have a mixture of two alpha hydrogen containing species. This first one has alpha hydrogens here and here, and this one has alpha hydrogens here. So if they are mixed together in the presence of a base, which will create almost equal amounts of these two enolates, remember the enolate is the conjugate base of the ketone or the aldehyde here. If we create that situation, then this enolate has a 50% chance of reacting with the same ketone that it came from or reacting with the other carbonyl compound, this aldehyde. Similarly, this other enolate we made in roughly equal amount to this one has a choice of reacting half the time with this carbonyl and half the time with this. And the four products that would result, the aldol reaction products, are listed here. This would be the result of the enolate of molecule one reacting with molecule one. That's where this comes from. And then after the protonation step to regenerate the catalyst, you'd have this aldol, aldol reaction product. Remember, aldol reaction products always have an alcohol. Oh, that's very large. An alcohol on the beta position. Here's alpha. Here's beta. Every molecule here has that combination. Beta alcohols. Uh, the question at the top of the screen is why is this reaction called a dog's breakfast? Um, in my graduate school research lab, we had several British blokes in the lab and they would always talk about reactions that created a large mess of products with no high yields. And they called that a dog's breakfast, which is just a big fat mess. It's like you put out food for your very energetic puppy and he just, there's food everywhere by the time the breakfast is over. So we don't like reactions that create multiple products. We like reactions that create one product, ideally. And the question here, how can I create only product one is quite simple. It's go back to Monday's lecture when we reacted only one carbonyl containing species, and then it created an enolate that reacted with itself, the unreacted carbonyl. And we got an aldol reaction that was with only one product. So product one, which results from the enolate of one, which came from molecule one, we can make that in very high yields by excluding molecule two. Just don't have it there. Similarly, the fourth product where there's no reaction at all with enolate one or molecule one is created by excluding molecule one. Those were called simple aldol. Some references call them self aldol. self aldol yep. combination of punctuations and this one also a simple or self aldol we're going to focus the rest of this screen on how we can create pot products two and three reliably. Product two, we want to make sure that the enolate is created from molecule uh, two. Is that a typo? I don't, uh, it might be. Uh, product two looks like the alpha carbon from molecule two. 
I'm sorry, there's no typo here. Molecule two needs to be deprotonated to make E2. And that will attack only molecule one. That's what would give this result. Product three, I need the enolate from only this molecule. So I need enolate from one to attack only the unreacted, sorry, unreacted molecule two. What we can do is instead of doing the simple aldol, where we have an equilibrium going on with the acid base reaction from the beginning, uh, that created this whole problem here because these two equilibria are going to create roughly equal amounts of both of these. What we're going to do is we're going to start with only one of the carbonyl compounds, the one we want to become an enolate. So to make product two, I need this enolate only. And I'm going to react it with a strong base this time. So there's no equilibrium, a much stronger base. We used hydroxide on Monday. Now we're going to use one that's the conjugate base of an amine. And I, we have to be cautious. We have to be cautious. We're going to take, well, it looks like we're going to make a uh, product two here. Product two, where this thing needs to become an enolate first. And what we did here was we reacted it with this very special base here called LDA. You probably know the L stands for lithium. The D means there's two identical groups on the nitrogen. So it's di, and those are isopropyls. Lithium diisopropyl. And careful how you pronounce this, it's an amid, not an amide. They're spelled the same, but an amid is the conjugate base of a NH. So it's an N minus. Amide is a functional group where nitrogen's neutral and attached to a carbonyl. We do not have that here. Why do we need such a specialized base to do this job? Well, the reason for that is quite simple. If I used another strong base, an amid, say methyl amid, NH CH3 minus, I would get some of my desired enolate, some, but I'd also get a fairly substantial amount of this imine. which I do not want. That's an undesired imine. You remember when you reacted a normal amine with an aldehyde, if it was a primary amine, then you would get an imine. Well, in this case, you would get it even faster because this is an even better nucleophile than amine. So why did we use LDA? You might guess that having bulkier groups prevents attack on the carbonyl, and you would be correct. So this LDA is a specialized molecule. When you see LDA, the thing you should think about is it deprotonates deprotonates. Uh, less hindered hydrogens. Now, in my example here, it doesn't have a choice. It's not going to deprotonate an aldehyde hydrogen. It's going to deprotonate alpha hydrogens because PKA says so. So we're going to deprotonate that and make this enolate in a very high yield, probably close to 100%. That reaction is over. Step one is done. And then you can react that enolate with whatever you want. You just need to add it now as a second step. And I do want to react it with this acetone because I my goal is to make product two. The enolate will attack. Got all the mechanisms here if you're curious. The enolate will attack. You generate an O minus. And in step three, we're going to protonate the O minus and make our aldol reaction product. And if we do step three in the presence of heat, you will get, not surprisingly, 
your aldol condensation product where you make the aldol reaction first, the aldol reaction product first, and then dehydrate it to get the condensation product right there. If you're curious about that mechanism, it'll appear very shortly. So once again, LDA, there's the business end of it without the spectator ion, taking an alpha H, generating an enolate right here. Enolate attacks carbonyl. Carbonyl generates an oxide ion on the same carbon. Oxide ion then protonates with HCl in step three. And if you want to dehydrate, it's an acid catalyzed version of dehydration, which is down here. We'll move this down. Acid catalyzed dehydration we haven't seen before. First step, protonate your OH to make it a better leaving group. And then the chloride will grab the alpha H and the pi will ensue and water will leave. And there's your aldol condensation product. The whole process is called a directed aldol reaction or a directed aldol condensation, depending on where you stop. Going from here and reacting with this to make this would be a directed aldol reaction and same aldehyde with same ketone and HCl and heat at the end makes an aldol condensation of the directed variety. If you want to know how to make product three, it's quite simple. Product three, I want this to be the enolate. This species here I need, and I need it exclusively. I do not want competing enolates. So I'm going to take acetone and react it with our new friend LDA. And then I'm going to react it with this aldehyde in step two. And then I'm going to protonate it to make product three. So we're going to do the old C below routine here. because we have finally answered those questions. And there's the summary of how to make product three. Start with a different material. Start with this thing that needs to become an enolate instead of this thing. There's the LDA. Ethanol was the other species. That's this thing right here. Ethanol, HCl to protonate. HCl and heat, if you want the condensation, leave the heat out, you'd have an alcohol on the beta position to make product three. That is product three. And there you have it. We have a directed aldol reactions and condensations. And they are very useful when we want to have a result that's not a self or simple aldol. And since we're on LDA, we'll finish our first segment by talking about a subject that we briefly mentioned when we talked about the Wittig reaction. And we're talking about reactions that are either under kinetic control or thermodynamic control. Thermodynamic is code speak for organic chemists when they want to be talking about equilibrium. Equilibrium favors the more stable products. So thermodynamic products are the ones that are more stable. Kinetic products are the ones that happen first and there's no options after they've happened. So kinetic control, the first thing that happens, I like to summarize it as the first thing that can happen is the only thing that does happen. first thing that can happen is the only thing that happens.
And typically the reason for that is that equilibrium is not allowed to happen. And with there's, when there's no equilibrium, then you can't have a more stable product take over. So let's, let's just talk about what would happen if we did this scenario right here. We take this molecule, which has two types of alpha H. It has the more hindered alpha H on a carbon that's got two bonds to two more bonds to carbon and the less hindered alpha H here. That is our new partner called LDA. And if you remember what I briefly introduced it as before is LDA deprotonates the less hindered hydrogen. That's all it does. It's a one trick pony. So which of those two is less hindered? It's the one on the right. It's easier to get to. So with an excess of LDA, which is what this says here, 1.1 versus one is an excess of LDA. A reminder that's called LDA. Then this is the only thing that happens. And because you've used an excess, you've made all of these into these. That's the end of that story. The next thing that happens is whatever you present that molecule with. It can be an aldol reaction or our soon to be covered Claisen reaction. And e PKEQ says this is not equilibrium. When we start with something that has a PKA of 20 and we generate a new acid that has a PKA of 40 with such a great difference between the two numbers, this is not an equilibrium process. It's a one way street. Now, how could I put the reaction under thermodynamic control? It's as simple as manipulating the amount of LDA. LDA is now not the excess reactant. LDA is the limiting reactant, which means you've only made 0 0.9 moles of this because after LDA is gone, you're not making any more of this. Now you have a base that's not LDA. It's the conjugate base of your ketone here. And notice LDA did the same thing. It's a one trick pony. It only knows how to take that H, not the more hindered one. It starts bumping into methyls if it tries to take those and it doesn't happen. But because you have this and still a 10th of a mole of unreacted ketone, this and this are the same thing. You're down to 0.1 moles of this. This can act like a base. And this is not a hindered base like LDA. This base will take, you You know, it'll take this H sometimes and the other H other times. But the, the key here is equilibrium is now established. Equilibrium is established from this one becoming this one. And if I had to choose which of those will be favored in an equilibrium, I'm gonna go with this one. My reason is not based on this structure. It's based on the more stable resonance form down here. And this more stable resonance form of the enolate here, compare those two and hyperconjugation tells us the one with three carbons attached to the alkene is the major enolate. So I expect the next reaction will happen with this nucleophile uh, with a high yield up to 95%. You would not get substantial amounts of anything from here because you don't have substantial amounts of this. So we got a thermodynamic control now. This enolate will be the major one and the chemistry of enolates will happen from here under these conditions with limiting LDA. The chemistry of this enolate will predominate under these conditions with an excess of LDA. And that's the secret to LDA limiting an excess. And that's a good spot for our first break. And I will see you right after the break. <laughs> 